Good morning. Thank you for coming to my channel. This is Canning with Kate. I'm Kate and I'm going to be doing something other than canning today. Um, I have started trying to make my own bread for a while because my daughter is gluten sensitive. And so I've been looking for good breads for her for a long time and have just not been able to find anything from the store that she'll eat that even I will eat. So they, I, we just don't like them, they're not good. <laughs> so I have been on the constant lookout for good breads and I've been trying to make my own gluten-free bread for um, about six months. And sometimes I'll find a good recipe, but when I try to replicate it, it doesn't work out. And then I'll have a loaf that nobody eats and I end up having to throw away perfectly good loaf but that doesn't taste good or didn't bake correctly and so it's still raw in the middle or um, it didn't rise or you know what have you so many issues have been going on to this bread making process and so um, I've been doing a lot of research and trying to find a loaf of bread that I can make from home that is going to be healthy for my family that my daughter can eat and that will give me consistent results every time that I make it. And that has been a very long, difficult process, let me tell you. But I finally found one. And so um, I wanted to share it with everybody that watches my channel and just hopefully get you started on the journey of making your own bread and being able to make a successful loaf of bread that your family will eat. because. Uh, it's been crazy difficult for me. So, um, I am getting this recipe from Homesteading Family from Carolyn on Homesteading Family. She did a free video on how to make this um, and she has her own website and her own YouTube channel and everything. So, I encourage you to go ahead and go check her out. She is a wealth of information from canning to homesteading to, you know, whatever, baking, everything. She's awesome. So this is from her uh, recipe, and I'm just going to show you how I replicate it weekly now. My kids, uh, I've started making two loaves every time. Oh. And, um, so my kids are going through about one loaf almost every day, so I'm having to make this frequently and I'm starting to feel a lot more confident in it and I am going to share you, share with you how I do that. So, um, first off, I'm gonna show you. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, so this is the loaf of bread that we are going through currently. Um, I wish you could smell it, it smells really good. But you can see that it's light and airy, it's not dense, and the flavor, in um, my opinion, is just fantastic. Now, this is not wheat bread. I have been making spelt. So I have organic spelt flour, um, and that's what I have been using because I found out that spelt is lower in gluten, and so it's going to be easier for my daughter to digest. So that's what the finished loaf looks like. That's our last loaf, so I need to get some made up today. All right. So the ingredients, you are gonna need warm water. I'm going to go ahead and microwave my water real quick. I know microwave is debatable, but it's what I do. So, all right, um, then you're going to need active dry yeast. So here's my yeast. You're going to need honey. This is my honey and white flour. Now I am working towards getting rid of the white flour. I want to gradually decrease the amount of white flour that I put into our bread and eventually it will just be um, a whole grain bread. But starting off easily, I'm putting some white flour in my bread. So there's white flour, I have olive oil, salt, right here I just use pink Himalayan sea salt and then a whole wheat flour or the flour of your choice um, here is my giant bag of spelt flour so this is the one that I'm using right now okay so because 
because I'm doing a double batch, I am going to be doubling all my ingredients. All right, and this is just my large bowl that I'm going to proof my bread in for later. Okay. So I have two cups of warm water in here and I'm going to be putting four teaspoons of yeast. tablespoons of honey. Get my honey. So if you're only doing one loaf, just have all of my measurements here. There's one tablespoon. two tablespoons. All right, now I'm going to stir it. All mixed together. Get the yeast and the honey all mixed up really well with the water. Now, you want to make sure that your yeast is not too hot or too cold. If your yeast is too hot, like if you touch it and it's like, ouch, it's too hot, um, then it will kill the yeast. Right, the water, if the water's too hot, um, it will kill the yeast. If it's too cold, it's not going to activate it. So you want to make sure that when you kind of stick your finger in your water, that it's just pleasantly warm, okay? All right, so I'm going to let this sit and proof. Okay, so there it is all mixed up, okay? And it's going to proof for about five to ten minutes. And I'm done with my honey, so I can put my honey away and I can put the yeast away. Okay, so this is going to proof. Um, and then I'm going to start getting the rest of my ingredients into my bowl that I'm going to use right now. Uh, let's see. So I have olive oil. I need two tablespoons of olive oil. I have a giant mess of honey on my counter. I always tend to make a mess when I bake. That's just my MO, I guess. So if you're like me, welcome to the club. If you're not, <laughs> I wish I were you. But um, I always make a mess and it's okay because everything usually turns out pretty well. And I'm not gonna worry about it because I have learned to clean up as I go. Um, all right, so olive oil, white flour. I'm going to need one whole cup of white flour. Get my white flour out. Now you wanna make sure that your flour is not packed. Um, so it needs to be Either you want to spoon it into your measuring cup from the bag or just kind of let, like what I do is I stick my measuring cup in and just kind of tip the bag so it falls into my cup well so I'm not like pressing it into the measuring cup and packing it in there because then it's just going to be too dense and it's actually too much flour and you're not going to get a good look. Okay, white flour, salt. So I'm going to need four teaspoons of salt. One, two, three, four. And that's all my salt, so I'm gonna put my salt away. Okay, so all these ingredients are in here. My yeast is starting to go ahead and bubble, so that's a great sign. Now, um, while we're waiting for that to proof, um, 
Here's all of my spelt flour. So there's a total of eight cups in this bowl. Now that's going to be the most that you should need. I'll, every time that I've made this bread though, I have not used all of it. So what I learned was that every kitchen and every place, even the seasons, the temperature outside, the humidity in your kitchen, everything is going to affect how your bread is made pretty much every time. So don't expect this recipe this recipe to be exact every single time that you make it. Like if you're using six cups of flour one day, you may or may not use six cups the next time that you make that bread because it depends on all these outside factors that are beyond your control. So what I learned was just kind of pre-measure all of the flour that you could possibly need. So there's eight cups of spelt flour in here. And then just don't worry about it. Don't measure anything else from that point forward because it may or may not be the same the next time you do it. And so if you have that mentality already in your head, you're not gonna worry about it and you're just gonna let the dough tell you when it's ready itself, okay? So um, then I also, I prefer to mix all of my dough by hand. You can certainly use a KitchenAid with a dough hook or you can use um, a food processor that has a dough blade if you want. But for me, it just, for me, for whatever reason, it seems to make a better dough when I do it by hand. It definitely gives my hand a workout, especially when I'm doing two loaves. It's definitely um, gets difficult towards the end, but it's an arm workout, right? It's a two for one. <laughs> you get bread and you get a workout at the same time. All right, so I'm gonna show you by hand and you can also, as I'm doing this, you can also remember that you can use your KitchenAid or your food processor if you have a dough hook attachment or whatever, if that's the way that you prefer to go. All right, so I don't know if you can see that. It's starting to foam up a little bit. I'm going to let it sit for about five more minutes, I think, and then we'll continue and keep keep getting started on, on the whole mixing process. And that's where the fun starts. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so we're back. And I'm gonna show you, this is nice and bubbly. So this is ready, all right. My younger two kids are playing with blocks right now. This house is not be used all of the um, blocks. Okay, well, I'll, sh I'll get with you in a few minutes, okay? okay? Mommy, look at this house. Okay, I will in a few minutes. Okay. So, this is also what happens when you make bread. Bread is, for me, it does tend to take a while. Um, and I've heard that it can take as little as like 90 minutes from start to finish, which I really wish mine would, but it never does. Um, my bread, because it takes so long for it to rise the first time, um, it just, it takes a long time for me to make it. It's pretty much an all day thing for me. Um, so everybody's gonna be different. Every house is gonna be different and you just gotta work with what you have. Okay, so now that I have this beginning mixture mixed up, I'm going to start adding in my flour. Okay, so you're gonna start adding in, I do about half a cup at a time. And there we go, and we're just gonna mix it up. And once it's fully mixed and everything is mixed in there nice and well, and it's all um, wet and you don't have giant chunks of dry flour, Cup. Okay, and what you're going to
going to be looking for is you're going to be looking for the bread to become less and less sticky and it's going to be harder and harder to stir if you're doing this by hand. Um, but the goal is to have a uniform, I guess, ball of dough that pulls away and kind of cleans your bowl for you because it's all pulling together. Um, and it's not going to be real sticky, so it's not gonna make your hands all, all sticky um, where you can't get the dough off. So at this point, I'm just adding in half a cup of flour each time and mixing it up. And this process usually takes me about 10 minutes to do um, once I have everything starting to get mixed. Once the yeast is ready and everything's in the bowl, it takes me about 10 minutes, I would say. But again, it's gonna change, you know, from time to time. So this is what it looks like right now after about the cup and a half. Okay. You just keep going. Once it starts getting a little bit thicker, you're going to decrease the amount of flour that you put in each time because um, it can go from really sticky to perfect in a heartbeat. And you don't wanna to put too much flour in it because then it's going to be too dense and too heavy, um, which I have definitely had experience with. And then, I have family members complain because it's not good, you know, and I I can't blame them. It's too heavy, it's too dense, it doesn't work for sandwiches, but um, this recipe has worked really well for sandwiches. My kids have started eating sandwiches again um, because I was trying to really stay away from store-bought breads, just um, number one, because the gluten-free breads are just awful at the store. Number two, if they were good, they were gonna cost me like eight bucks for a small loaf. And um, this here is way more economical. And the other breads, um, I just, I don't like all of the, the processed ingredients in the bread. So for the rest of my kids, I just don't wanna give it to them. I want them to have something that's really healthy for them. All right, so you can see this is starting to get thicker, starting to hold together, but it's still pretty sticky. All right, so I'm going to start watching this a little bit closer, maybe add a little bit less than half a cup. It's getting harder to stir, which is telling me that it's starting to get closer to being ready. This is the workout part. <laughs> this is when your arms get a workout. Um, you can kind of see that it's starting to pull away from the bowl. Um, starting to clean it a little bit, but it's still not quite there. It's still pretty sticky. I wouldn't want to stick my hands in there and start kneading it because then my hands would be full of, of uh, bread dough and it would be really really hard to get it off all right so you can see that it's not sucking in that flour nearly as easily or as quickly as it was before it's starting to turn into like layers okay so this is this is good this is what you want but you just keep mixing Okay, you keep working that flour into the dough. Now, once it gets to this point, I'm really going to decrease the amount of flour that I'm going to put into my dough because if any time it can be enough, okay? But you can see that this is still pretty sticky, okay? 
but it is taking longer for me to stir it all the way in and to get everything mixed. So it's coming. And I haven't even kept track of how much flour I've put in. I have no idea how many cups of flour I have in this dough. And I'm not gonna worry about it because I know that as long as I can read my dough, everything is going to turn out fine. other armor work out here too. Don't want to have just one giant arm, <laughs> right? Okay, so as I am mixing this, the dough is starting to clean away from the sides. I don't know if you can see that, but it is starting to clean away from the sides, which is good. But don't forget the bottom of your dough either, or the bottom of the bowl. You want to get all of that mixed up. This is why it's really good to have a really good strong wooden spoon because this dough is gonna be tough to mix by hand or towards the end. Okay. So I'm doing about a quarter cup now. Maybe not even. Okay, I did like an eighth of a cup in that one. Eventually, I want to teach my kids how to make the dough, how to make bread themselves, and then I don't have to make six loaves of bread a week. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay. So. Okay, you can see that my bowl is pretty clean. good. It's coming together. All right, it's still a little bit tacky, so I'm going to put just a tiny bit. I'm going to finish off the flour. Just kind of like a sprinkling of flour in there. Okay, so just a little dusting and then keep mixing. tiny bit more and then we're going to start kneading it so once all the flour is in there that it needs we're going to get to the kneading process and I always had trouble with kneading dough I could never get it right it was either would never come into um, like a ball it would just remain really really sticky or it would always just tear or it would become super dense. All right. Almost there. Okay. Okay. So following this video that I watched, from the Homestead family. Um, she showed me the trick to kneading the dough. And instead of taking like 100 hours to knead my dough properly, it takes me like five minutes um, from the time that I do this to the time that my dough is properly kneaded and is ready to rise for the first time. So that was fantastic. All right, so here's the dough. Okay, it's still a little bit sticky. So you can see that this is a process. And you just have to learn that 
you need to be patient and learn what your dough needs because again each time it might be different it might take a little bit longer each time or it might be a quick process each time all right this is looking better benefit of doing this is that when you wash your bowl, it's really easy to wash <laughs> because all the dough has pretty much been cleaned off by itself, which is amazing. Okay. All right. So you can see this is not that sticky. My hands are clean. So I know now that this is ready to go ahead and knead. I'm going to move this over here and put this here and roll in my sleeves, bring these off, and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on here. Okay, that's good. And you don't want to put too much flour on here because then you're going to over flour accidentally your dough and after working that hard you don't want to over flour it and make it too dense okay so i'm just going to clean off my spoon get my dough that's the coffee maker turning off See how nice and clean that is? That's awesome. Okay, so now my dough is ready. Let me see, make sure you guys can see a picture. All right, so I'm just going to lightly flour my dough. All right, so see, this is not sticky really at all. All right, and I can pick it up, and it's a nice solid ball. So I'm just going to knead it until it's done. All right, before it gets done, I'm going to show you what you don't want so you know what you don't want. All right, when you check, when you do the test, it's called a window pane test. What you do is you take like a walnut size glob of dough, roll it out, and then you start to stretch it. Okay? and you're going to start seeing that it tears, okay? This is like shredding. This tells me that the gluten, the natural gluten in this dough is not ready. It's not, um, it's not done yet. So that means that you just need to keep kneading your dough. So this can take anywhere from like five minutes to 15 minutes. It just depends on excuse me, what your kitchen is like, what the outside is like, the humidity, the temperature, the um, who knows what all is in this. Okay, I'm going to add a tiny bit more flour. This is something kids could do easily. Let's teach them how to knead the bread, the dough. And it's kind of fun for kids, I think. Maybe not as much fun for us, but. Can you let out frustrations on the bread dough. All right. All right. I remember it growing up when my mom would make bread or um, I don't remember if it was bread or, or rolls or biscuits, she would make them from scratch and she would start teaching me how to um, knead the dough. 
and I thought it was a lot of work back then, but it was kind of fun. So my mom is the one who taught me how to knead still when I was a kid. I know now my kids are used to the Pillsbury stuff, but not anymore. I'm going to learn how to make all that stuff from scratch. Okay, so here's what my dough looks like now. It's nice and um, smooth, elastic, so I think that it is, it's not sticky. I think it's about ready. So I'm just going to take this, roll it out. My hands are a little sticky. Roll this out. It They're is. messy. Yeah. All right. So get a nice ball. And I'm just going to start stretching it. It may not be ready. But if it's not ready, then you just keep kneading until it is. So this is what it is so far. Just keep pulling it gently around. And what you want to see is light shining through without breaking okay so oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see that um, but there's it's starting to get really thin and it's not breaking okay so that's what you want you it's called a window pane test because if you bring it up to a window or a source of light you can see the light coming through and as long as it's not breaking and um, you're not getting a bunch of tearing in the dough, then that tells you that the gluten in it has been activated enough to where it's ready to go ahead and put to rise. Okay, so my bread is ready. Now, um, for my kitchen, okay, look, this is how much flour I still have left. This is why you don't pay attention to the flour that you need because that's quite a bit left in there. Um, all right, so I'm going to get my bowl. All right, this is my glass bowl. It's a large glass bowl. And you just pour some olive oil into it. Okay. And you just wanna grease Oh, greasy right now. Grease your loaf or your dough, your dough ball, and no. put it in there. All right, now pay attention to how big this is because when it rises the first time, you want it to about double in size. All right, so for me, I need to actually put this in the oven and I put it on the lowest temperature that I can because I don't want to cook it. I don't want to bake it yet. I just want it to rise. So nice. for me, our oven is at 170. So once that reaches 170, I'm going to put a damp cloth over this, a damp towel, and I'm going to stick this in the oven for about 30 minutes. Sometimes it will rise, depending on your kitchen, it will rise within like 15, 20 minutes. Um, but for me, it can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to rise. So I put a damp towel on it and just stick it in my warm oven and I just wait, okay? So um, a lot of people say that you can, you know, clean up, you can do your dishes, everything like that. You can fold laundry all that time while you're waiting for your bread to your bread dough to rise. So you have, you know, approximately between anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour to wait and to, you know, just walk away and don't worry about this. It's doing its thing and so, um, that's what we do and once it doubles in size I will bring you back and show you what the next step is so again this is going to go in a warm place you can put it people have put um, dough on top of the refrigerators put you can put it in the oven you can put it on the stove um, if by your stove is a nice warm spot um, some people are free to leave it just out on their counter it depends on your kitchen so for me, I need to put it in the oven because this kitchen is not on the warm side. Okay, so uh, damp cloth, let it rise, double in size, and I'll bring you back. All right, 
see you in about an hour. All right, welcome back. My, oh, hold on. I forgot to close my oven door. All right, so my bread has been rising for the past about 40 minutes. It took me about 40 minutes, and you can see it is nice and risen. It's about double what it used to be. All right, so to kind of double check and make sure that it's risen enough, you kind of take two fingers and just poke your dough. Um, and if it stays, then it should be good. Now, the holes that I poked into the dough have not filled in, like sometimes they'll fill in right away, but the holes are staying steady. They're not filling in, okay? So that tells me that my dough has risen enough. So the next part is the fun part. You just kind of punch it in, punch it down, okay? Now, I am going to put my, my countertop is clean. So, no worries there. Um, but I don't have a clean cutting board right now, so <laughs> that's why I'm putting it on my countertop. But it is clean. All right, so now I'm just going to remove my dough from my bowl. And kind of form it into a nice ball. Okay. Now, this is a double uh, recipe, remember. So I just have this little, I don't know what it's called, but it's I use it to cut my dough with. So I'm just going to divide it in half as best I can. And then you just kind of make, you kind of form your dough into a loaf. Okay, you want it to look kind of nice, okay? Smooth on top if you can. Kind of put any, you know, folds underneath so you don't see them on the bottom. It's, it's not a problem if the top of your bread is um, kind of wrinkly or whatever, it's just aesthetics. Um, and then I'm just going to let it rest for five minutes, okay? So, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Now, I do have some flour on this dough, so that just means that after it's baked, it's going to have a little bit of flour on the top, but it's not going to affect the flavor or anything. All right, so this one looks pretty decent. All right, so I'm just going to set the timer and let it rest for five minutes, and then I'm going to put them into my bread pans. So I just have a smaller uh, bread pan. So I have this one, and I have this one, okay? Um, so this recipe, as is, it makes about a one-poundish bread loaf. All right, so I'm just kind of getting some olive oil and what I learned from another video when I was trying to make bread a previous time so this did not come from the homesteading family but it's a trick that I learned that so I've done it both ways I have greased the entire uh, pan all the sides uh, everywhere and I started only greasing the corners and the bottom. So what this other lady said was if you grease only the corners and the bottom of your bread loaf pan, um, the bread tends to rise better because the, the dough will kind of stick to the sides and it's, it rises. So it will have a better rise. And so I tried that trick uh, this last time that I made bread and my bread did rise better. So that's what I'm going to do this time. I'm just greasing the bottom and then the corners of my loaf. 
all right? And so once this has rested for five minutes, um, I'm going to kind of spread it out into my loaf pans and I'm going to cover them again and put them on the top of my oven and just to warm up and that will be the second rise. Then I preheat my oven to 400. Um, get this oil off my fingers. Preheat the oil, <laughs> preheat the oven to 400 and that's what you're going to bake it at. So this is going to rest for about two more minutes. Then I'll bring you back and we'll put this in the loaf pans and put them to do the second rise. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. These are breasted and now I'm going to put them into the loaf pans. Right. Sometimes this is my hardest time to get them pretty, but <laughs> some people can get these looking really pretty. I'm not one of those. I wish I was. Maybe, maybe someday. Maybe someday I'll have beautiful loaves of bread. But as long as they taste good, as long as they are healthy for my family, as long as my family will eat them, I'm not gonna complain. All right, so here's my two loaves of bread. Now I'm going to cover them with a towel and put them in like where my, uh, where my oven kind of gets hot when my stove is on or my oven is on. And I'm going to let these rise for the second time for about 30 minutes. Um, what I'm looking for is for the, the top of the loaf to just come all over the top of my pan. So I want it to double in size a little bit. Um, and then once that is done, then I will make sure that my oven is preheated to the 400 and we'll place them in the oven. All right, see you back in about half an hour. All right, I am back and the bread has been doing its second rise for about 45 minutes now. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. All right, so I covered them with a towel. And there, you can see that they're both risen above the, the edge of the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven. Please forgive my messy oven. Okay, there's one and two. All right, so this is at 400. I'm going to leave these in for 15 minutes and then um, I'm going to just kind of turn it and then do for about seven minutes after that. So 15 minutes I'm going to turn the loaves in the oven and then do another seven minutes. And for me, that works perfectly. So um, after the 15 minutes, you just kind of have to watch it, kind of gauge it. And the way you know it's done is if you tap on the the top of the bread and it sounds kind of hollow and it's, it's crusty. So um, after the bread has baked, I will bring you back and show you the end results. All right, welcome back to the final portion of this video. All right, my bread was in there for uh, 23 minutes. And they do feel, or they do sound hollow. So they are ready to go. And let me get my oven mitts. I just took these out, so these are super hot. But there is my loaf. It smells amazing, let me tell you. I was taking them out of the oven and my youngest son was like, oh, that bread smells so good. And that's the best thing for me to hear right now. All right, so now what I do, and this is not necessary, but this is what I do. Um, I take just a stick of butter and I rub it over the bread when it's still hot. And the reason I do this is to have a softer top. Um, if you don't do this, then you're just gonna have, you know, a crusty top to your bread. And if that's what you like, that's 
one step that you don't need to do, but it's something that I do because our family does like a softer top to our bread. We don't like the, the really hard crusty, crusty part. So I'm just gonna let this sit for about two minutes or three minutes, and then I'm going to remove them from the, the pan and let them fully cool. Um, if you just cannot wait for cutting into these loaves of bread, it's fine, but um, just know that the, the inside might um, not be the same as if you let it cool completely and you're gonna wanna eat it, you know, within the next 24 hours if you, if you do decide to go ahead and cut into this before it's fully cooled. But if you do that, I don't blame you because it tastes amazing as soon as it comes out of the oven with hot butter and oh, it's one of the best things. So this is how I make bread. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you learned something from it. And I hope that you try it. So let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if this is something that you're going to try. Let me know how it turns out. I would love to hear from you guys if you make this and if it turns out beautifully. Um, that would just make my day. Um, and so, uh, like my video, please subscribe, share this if you make my bread. If you know anybody who wants to learn how to make bread, and um, go check out the homesteading family as well, because Carolyn is awesome at uh, just teaching different types of skills. So. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.